This is such a busy time to get ready for summer. We still have a lot to do as we make this new garden our own and prepare new planting areas and add gorgeous plants to our space. So this week we're tackling a woodland garden before the hot weather sets in. Hi everyone, welcome to a new planting video. Today I want to focus on a new area in the garden that we're going to call the woodland garden. It's not really a woodland, it's just the area under one oak tree that we have in the back garden, but it does feel a little bit like a woodland. We do have the neighboring trees that are providing that woodland feel. We have an existing edging that's pretty lush. We already have a lot of green and a lot of backdrop there with established planting. I've been keeping the grass longer under that tree because it's more wildlife friendly, plus the cats love it, it's less maintenance, and it also really gives that separation between that woodland area that's a little bit wilder and the grass that I'm trying to keep. Really trying is the keyword. I'm trying to keep it a little bit more cut. For the area, I really want to keep it really simple and also really wild looking because it's a woodland garden. So I sowed a couple of seeds, some forget-me-nots to get those little clouds of blue and also some Amy Majors. I am obsessed, really, I don't know how to describe it, but when you walk through the forest with the soft spring light and you see this, this beautiful white, it's wispy, it's light, it's magical, I want it in the garden. So we have those two things. I also picked up some foxgloves, some astilbe, and a couple of other woodland plants. I also want their bulb meadows. So even though I'm going to keep the grass long, it's still going to be really beautiful to have bulbs that tolerate more shade to go there. Things like miscarry, like daffodils, like crocuses, some fritillaries. I also want to add bluebells. Okay, so I want to show you the plants that I got for the area. We're probably going to have to do some repotting for the bits that we started from seed. I want to show you the area, of course. I already started planting some of the bulbs that I lifted from the containers, so we're going to do some of that. Okay, and this is the container situation. As you can tell, it needs attention. It was once upon a time a really glorious spring container display, and right now it's been pillaged for compost, and we gotta, we gotta do something with the bulbs. We already added some primroses and some snowdrops to the space. So right now, if we plant also the miscarry that we had in containers and some of the daffodil, we're going to have color for much longer in the spring. So basically today what I'm going to do is replant my spring bulbs. I actually already had to remove some of the compost and use it in the beautiful border that you see behind me. I love how the border turned out and I can't wait for it to grow. But it means that right now I really need to take care of my spring bulbs because they've been compostless for a little while. They've bloomed, their foliage is dying back, so it's the great time to be planting them out. So we're gonna empty all the containers and then they'll be ready for replanting for summer.
I picked up two massive astelb that are gorgeous. Their, their foliage is going to die off over winter, but they produce these beautiful plumes of white, which is going to bring us some light. I think I can divide these and hopefully they're going to be happy in that area. They like a part shade, so we, we have some dappled sunlight in the morning there, but otherwise it's pretty shaded. So we'll see, we'll give this a test drive. I think before we decide on the final placement for this plant, we need to move the compost bin. My idea is to tuck it behind the tree so that we see it much less from the terrace and from the house. And then we can use the planting over here to further shield it. And then we'll leave the access around the side of the fence because anyway, we don't have a lot of grass growing so we can work on formalizing a pathway, maybe edge it with some nice planting so it's still an area that's still pretty accessible. So let's, let's see if I can figure this out. First, we're gonna finish the wood storage. Completely broken. Okay, change of plans. I thought I could lift this out and then just shuffle all the leaves and whatever is in this compost pile, but it's it's completely dismantling. So I know that I want the compost area to be over here and it's going to help us out also that hole in the edging so we'll keep this here for now and assume that everything is going to be tucked there and try to place the plants as well as possible. managed to get two plants out of wood so that's 50 percent off and now with this extra one here that was a bit smaller we have a trio Then I was thinking, I still have so many spring bulbs to plant, but that's, you know, we won't see them straight away. So what else can I add? And I had grabbed three of this really beautiful terrella with that wispy foliage, and I wanted to plant them, but I, I couldn't figure out where because they would get lost in the grass because they're very small. If I put them behind the grass, we're not gonna see them and the spiking interest would be really nicely rebalanced by the astilb. And then I thought, I have this oak barrel that I had used last year for the Christmas display. So I think we could use that, but we might need a few more plants. Let's see. Oh my God. 
So I already lined up the container, filled it up with compost and lined up some plants. I decided to pop this beautiful bay tree standard as a centerpiece. I know it prefers full sun, but I think we might still be okay with this dappled shade. Right now it's producing the cutest berries. Then around it, at the front, I want to put this beautiful terriella. I just love those blooms. They are so wispy. I'm also going to pop this Decentra Alba. I hope it's going to flower. It's good for part shade, so let's see what it does. Then I also popped three Alchemilla Mollis. I think they're going to love this area and they produce lime color blooms. Two little foxgloves. William Limoncello, I'm not sure they're gonna bounce back. They were basically puppies on a bigger plant, so we'll see. And then some strawberry plants that I found in the yard. There were a lot of them growing, you know, in corners, in the paving, under some edging. So they've been soaking for a little while. I'm hoping they're gonna take to this new container so that they can spill over the sides. I think, I think they'll be lovely. For the woodland garden, I also planned to add some images of those beautiful wispy white blooms and some forget-me-nots. Right now, I've sowed the seeds a bit earlier on in March, but the seedlings are still pretty small, so I don't think they're going to make it in the tall grass. So I'm just going to repot them, hold on to them, and possibly plant them in the fall once they're going to be a little bit bigger, beefier, and they can tackle that vigorous grass. For the area is that it's going to be self-sustaining with plants that are self-seeding readily that are spreading and that it's just low maintenance but beautiful year-round i hope you enjoyed this woodland desk planting today it's a bit different from what we normally do but i really want an area in the garden that stays a little bit wilder the cats love it it's also less maintenance and overall I really want that more natural look in that woodland part of the garden. So stay tuned, next week we're doing summer containers. I have a little grouping that I've just prepared on the terrace. We're going to do summer plants. I already have three beautiful roses there and I already have a lot of plants that we can use. So we'll do that next week. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs> Come on, good job, good job.